1959, that's 10 years before man first stepped on the moon, three years before the Cuban Missile Crisis, and 38 years before I was even born. With modern cameras releasing every few years, with each new iteration pushing resolution, performance, and image quality, that seems like an eternity ago. Well, what if I told you that in 1959, in Wetzlar, Germany, this very camera would be assembled by hand, by an artisan, and that 57 years later, an aspiring photographer, me, from Melbourne, would be able to call it his very own. Well, seven years of happy ownership later, and I can confidently say this Leica M2 has produced some of my favorite photos of my career so far, and I adore this camera. Let's talk about it. So the Leica M2 is a rangefinder style camera, which differs from the traditional SLR in the sense that it uses a series of mirrors in order to let you compose your image. And it uses this overlapping image patch situation in order to focus the photos. So you simply align the image together in the patch and the photo is in focus. This is one of the quickest ways to accurately manually focus with a film camera. And I've always struggled to focus SLRs that don't have a split prism, which replicates this method of focusing in the sense that you align the images together to get it in focus. Range finders were really common back in the day, but nowadays they've all but died out with just Leica producing modern digital range finders. And there is also that one French company, uh, Pixie, but that's a, that's a tiny company. And I think uh, the YouTube channel Snappiness has a really good video on that camera. Definitely go and check it out after this one. What is the benefit of a rangefinder style camera? You know, isn't it better to actually see exactly the image that you're going to be getting? Like, didn't you say in your custom Polaroid video that one of the benefits of that camera was that it was an SLR? Well, look, a rangefinder style camera has a distinct benefit of allowing you to see more of the total scene using these frame lines in order to show you what will actually be captured. This lets you compose your shot easier since you can see other compositions directly in the viewfinder itself. Most rangefinder cameras also have this. This is a frame line selector switch which allows you to change the frame lines to various different focal lengths in order to see what the image would look like without actually having to change the lens. So on the M2, the frame lines are for 30, 50, and 90 millimeter lenses. But that's not to say that you can't use other lenses on it, but it just won't show the associated frame lines. I have used a 28 millimeter lens on my M2, and I actually just use the external dimensions of like the viewfinder itself to kind of give me a rough approximation of what the frame line would be. And I found that that actually worked fairly well. But is a rangefinder style camera, like is it is it better than an SLR camera? There is definitely lots of debate online from many Leica purists who believe that a rangefinder is the most pure shooting experience possible. And they're definitely popular for a reason, but I think they both have their place. And look, while I love my M2, I'm not gonna sit here and preach about how you know amazing manually focusing with a rangefinder can be. Except that it is really such a great way to quickly focus manually. And that, you know, as a carry around camera, it's really hard to beat the beautiful package that the M2 is. A sexy, beautifully built body, milled from brass with a smooth film advanced lever, which feels like butter. And this tactile shutter speed knob. Oh, I mean, oh yeah, this thing is nice to shoot with. And shoot with that I have, because I've put at least 400 rolls of film through this camera in my last seven years of owning it. And I've taken it all around the world with me. And outside of a CLA that I had done to it in 2016 after buying it, it has literally never missed a beat, producing some of my favorite photos of my career so far. I bought this camera through a Japanese auction site as a 19th birthday present to myself for, I think it was 850 Australian. And I remember my parents thinking that I was crazy for spending that much money on an old camera. But now with M2s routinely selling for nearly three times that amount, I think I made a pretty wise choice. However, that said, you know, I will never sell this camera. You know, it just, it, it has far too much sentimental value to me. And I hope to one day pass it along to my future kids. As for what lenses I've used, well, you know, this might be contentious to some, but I've actually only ever had two lenses for this camera and neither were actually produced by Leica. Um, as a 19 year old, I couldn't really afford to buy real M mount lenses. And so instead I settled for these. These are vintage Canon LTM rangefinder lenses. So I have this one here, which is the 51.4 LTM. Uh, it's colloquially known as the Japanese Summer Lux. And the lens that's on the camera now, which is the 35 millimeter F2, which I call the Japanese Summicron. You know, they might not be made by Leica, but the quality of these lenses is exceptional. And I think that the 50 millimeter produces incredible results for the fairly affordable price tag. I know what you're gonna say. I mean, like why not buy a Voigtlander Bessa or some old Soviet made Fed instead? Like, isn't the whole point of Leica, you know, like the lenses? 
Well, having been fortunate enough to shoot with a bevy of expensive Leica lenses from the 3514 Summer Lux to a 50 Summer Cron and even a 5095 Noctilux, while I can say that Leica glass is phenomenal, I've always really loved the way that these old Canon LTM lenses render images, and I've honestly never felt the need to splurge, you know, a few thousand dollars on an M-mount lens. Maybe sometime in the future, we'll see. However, having used cheaper rangefinder cameras, I can tell you that without a doubt that the rangefinder patch and operation of the M rangefinders is unmatched. I mean, the patch is so damn bright and it's easy to see what you're focusing on and, you know, the all brass body just feels so good in the hand. Like, loading a roll of film to this camera and closing the film door feels like you're closing a bank vault door. It's secure and it instills so much confidence that the photos that you're going to be getting are going to be great. And in a world of instant autofocus, see in the dark low light capability and so much more, the limitations of the M2 in a modded setting help in creating limitations, you know, like to keep things interesting and to challenge you to shoot without any assistance. And when I say no assistance, I mean it. The M2 is through and through a mechanical camera, no electronics at all, like a fine Swiss watch. The inside of the M2 is an amalgamation of little springs, gears and cogs. No light meter either. Either use your phone or an external meter, or just guess it. Film has an outstanding latitude, and you can blow out your highlights and still get a decent image. Just try not to underexpose your photos. And this all mechanical nature, however, does mean that the M2 doesn't actually have a hot shoe, which is my biggest gripe with this camera. And so you might be wondering how I was able to capture so many flash photos with it. And the answer is very simple. Like the RZ, the M2 requires a flash hot shoe sync adapter to work properly. Um, here is actually a German made one, which I bought when I got the camera itself. Um, it plugs um, into this adapter, which also goes into the M2's like really ancient old flash port. And it usually works. Um, it was much better when I first got it. It would almost, almost always fire. But nowadays I've noticed that the camera kind of, like it sometimes doesn't actually fire the flash. Like the shutter will go, but the flash won't work. I believe it's a problem with the adapter itself because I have tried it on the RZ and it also is a little bit finicky on that camera too. I'll need to look and see if I can get a new adapter perhaps or something like that. My favorite photo that I've taken with this camera would have to be this photo of a Ford GT40, which I took in 2016. I'd been working with a modeling agency at the time and the director's dad had a fairly eclectic car collection and they asked me if I'd be interested in taking photos of any of them. And when I'd heard that he had a GT40, I mean, even if it was only a replica, I knew that I had to shoot it. We took this photo outside of a abandoned burr repairs in Footscray, which for anyone not in Australia, it's like a tire shop. Um, the paint on the walls, it just looked like it was painted for the car. And here are a few more photos from that shoot that I've actually never shared online before. Um, this is definitely probably one of my favorite photos I've ever taken in my career. And I've actually got it hanging up framed in my living room. I, I absolutely, yeah, this, this photo is so cool. I just, I just love the colors. I love the way that it looks. So with the rising costs associated with shooting film, I don't really shoot the M2 as much as I'd like to. Since the RZ67, which I recently made a video on as well, you should definitely check out, offers a substantial bump in resolution and quality. But every so often I will go out with the old girl and I'll take photos with it. And it just reminds me every single time why it's so damn special. And yeah, that's the Leica M2. Have you ever shot on a live film like M? Do you think they're worth the hype? Thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you like the video and would like to see more great photography content. I've got heaps more coming in the future. Have a great day. Bye.